grade sevens, Helen here with your latest natural sciences lesson. So what are we going to explore today? Well, we've been looking at acids and bases for a number of lessons now, and we're going to finish off our exploration into acids and bases by looking at something called acid rain. So now we're taking acids and bases out of your house and instead of looking at all of your household items and deciding according to their properties whether they're acids or bases, we're now going to take acids out into the environment. So let's ask ourselves, have you ever heard the term acid rain? Maybe you've heard of it and you don't quite understand what it is. I mean rain is rain of course, it's not acidic is it? Well, let's learn about acid rain today. Normal rain has a pH of about 5.6. Now that might be quite surprising to you. You might have thought that it's water and I've told you that water has a pH of about 7. Because pure water is a neutral substance. But rainwater is in fact somewhere here in the middle between 5, pH 5 and pH 6. So rainwater is naturally a very weak acid. Now why would that be? Well the problem is that rainwater isn't just water. When water passes through the atmosphere there is also carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere and the water and the carbon dioxide combine chemically, they don't mix, they combine chemically to produce a new substance which is a weak acid and the name of that acid is carbonic acid. Now carbonic acid is a very weak acid but it does then lower the pH of rainwater from that of pure water to slightly acidic. You've even got some carbonic acid floating around in your bloodstream because your blood has water in the plasma and of course your cells produce carbon dioxide as a waste product and the blood carries that carbon dioxide to your lungs in order for you to breathe it out. So for a short while some of that carbon dioxide combines to form carbonic acid and that's okay. It's a weak acid and it's only there temporarily and then it gets out of your body. So the weak acid that is formed by water and carbon dioxide chemically bonding to make carbonic acid is not going to harm the environment, right? It's a normal natural chemical reaction that happens in the atmosphere. So let's remind ourselves about this water cycle and I'm sure you've been learning about the water cycle for many years and you understand that bodies of water evaporate due to the heat from the sun and the gas then forms clouds where the, the gas condensates to make little water droplets and when there are lots of water droplets and they become very heavy this condensation then precipitates or falls down to the ground as rain and some of the rain collects back into reservoirs like rivers and lakes and the sea and some of it runs off the land and some collects in underground water storage called groundwater. So that's our normal water cycle and yes some of that water contains a little bit of carbonic acid but it doesn't harm the environment. But let's have a look at what happens in an industrial society where we have factories and motor vehicles 
releasing lots of acidic gases into the atmosphere. We have sulfur dioxide and other substances that are strong acidic gases being released as part of the waste that factories produce. Now what happens is we have those acids combining with water droplets no longer to form weak carbonic acid only, but to form strong acids. And these strong acids then fall with the rainwater. And we call this kind of rain acid rain. So now you understand the term where acid rain comes from. And what happens when it falls then in rivers, lakes, the ocean, and on land, is it has some very, very negative consequences. Remember, a consequence is a result of an action. So normal rainwater, even though it is slightly acidic, doesn't harm the environment. But once we start adding acids into the atmosphere, and the acids combine with the rainwater to form much stronger acids, we're going to see results in the environment. There are going to be consequences and we need to look at those consequences and we need to find out if the consequences of acid rain are worse all of the industrial action by this factory, for example. Or do we have to put in place some system that prevents those acids from entering the atmosphere and creating acid rain? So there's lots of very big questions that we have to ask ourselves. Let's explore the pH of acid rain. So we know that pure water is around pH 7. That's pure water or distilled water that is only water, nothing added to it. Normal rainwater we know has a small amount of carbonic acid in it and we see that normal rainwater is somewhere between pH 5 and pH 6, around about 5.6. Let's also now have a look at seawater. Seawater is quite alkaline, it's just over pH 8. So seawater is a lot more alkaline than what pure water or normal rainwater is. And now we have a look at acid rain and we see that acid rain can have a pH of 4 on average. Sometimes acid rain can go down even lower on the pH scale. Some acidic fogs in very industrial areas have even been measured at around one and a half, which we're talking about the pH of stomach acid and, and getting very close to the pH of battery acid. So we can see that sometimes, depending on how much acidic gas is being pumped into the atmosphere, we can produce a lot more acidic rain or acid rain. And we need to understand that the acid rain doesn't just fall in the one spot where it was made, for example. The clouds get blown around by the wind. And so the acid rain could have been produced in one area, but it could fall in a completely different area and have consequences in that area. And those are the problems associated with acid rain. If acid rain just fell where it was made, we could probably make a plan. But the fact is that the chemicals drift with the wind and the acid rain can fall in other areas. Let's have a look at some of these consequences of acid rain. And remember, when we talk about consequences, we talk about results of some kind of action. So we know that the rain 
is the action, what are the results if the rain is acidic? Well, first of all, lowering the pH of fresh water and seawater makes the water toxic to fish and other aquatic animals like crayfish and little water snails. And this, of course, doesn't only kill those organisms themselves, but it has a knock-on effect, which means that if we decrease the population of fish, we're going to in turn affect the population of animals that rely on those fish for food. So lowering the pH means making it more acidic. And I think you can see that it's not only fresh water areas where the pH is going to be lowered, but very dramatically, if this acid rain falls over sea, it's going to affect the seawater quite radically. And these animals are going to die. They are adapted and they have adapted over millions of years to live in water that has a certain pH or a certain amount of acidity or alkalinity. If we change the pH of the water, we're going to kill off the animals. And some of you may have experience at this. If you've kept fish in a fish tank and the pH of the water changes for some reason or another, you will find that you kill off all the organisms in the water. Maybe you had some little snails and some fish. They will suffer as a result. Another consequence of acid rain is the way it affects the soil. So we have the acid rain falling and the acid affects the soil. And trees and other plants cannot absorb the water because what we see is a chemical reaction taking place and the chemicals in the acid rain interfere or react with chemicals that are in the soil and we see that this affects the ability of the plants to absorb the water and of course their leaves are also going to be damaged by acid rain. This is not a photograph from South Africa, this is a photograph from Norway in Europe and we see that whole areas of uh, forest, particularly these pine trees, have been killed off as a result of acid rain. We know how important trees are because trees and forests and all other plants use carbon dioxide and remove the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because that's how they make their food. So if we start having deforestation happening or we start killing off forests of plants, we're going to affect or all the consequence is going to be a negative effect on the way plants absorb carbon dioxide. But it's not only animals and plants and the soil that's affected, even our built environment. Acid rain damages limestone buildings and this is an example of a building that has been made with limestone and we can see that pockets of the limestone have been dissolved away due to acid rain. Coral is an animal that lives in the sea that in fact produces the materials that limestone is made up out of. Have you heard of bleaching, coral bleaching? on the Great Barrier Reef near Australia. So we see that acid rain damages built environment and the natural environment. And finally, acid rain and acid fog can cause health problems such as asthma when that acidic air is drawn into our lungs. So big consequences involved with the production of acid rain. Until next time, goodbye.